Hey everyone! Halloween is just around the corner, so today I want to show you how to recycle a paper plate holder into a cute jack-o'-lantern decoration. This is DIY instead of buy, so let's get to crafting. You can find these plate holders at most thrift shops. I just had to ask my mom if she still had any of the plate holders we used when we were kids. She said, of course I do. You know I don't get rid of anything. Here I'm showing you how not to paint it. The acrylic brush on paint, it just wasn't giving that vibrant look that I wanted. So I decided to spray paint it and I would highly recommend that. It gave a nice bright pop of color. It got in all of the crevices and it was so much quicker. So now I'm trying to decide on which pumpkin face to use. I just did a Google image search for these. And once I've decided, I cut out all of the shapes and I will space them out on the orange plate holder until I'm pleased with the look. What do you prefer, the nose pointing up or down? So now that we have all our pattern pieces cut out, we're going to take some scrap pieces of black felt to trace our pattern onto. And I couldn't find any chalk for this, so I just used a colored pencil, which it got the job done, but it did not make it easy. So you're going to cut out those pattern pieces now on the felt and put them in place on your pumpkin. And double check that your sizes matched up. And did the same thing for the eyes and the mouth there. And again, you can adjust to make sure everything is exactly where you want it to lay. And then comes the easy part of gluing all of your facial features on. I think I might have went a little glue crazy on this, but hey, I just wanted to make sure that my pumpkin's face stayed on. And by the looks of it, it ain't going nowhere. So now I'm going to use model magic to make the stem of the pumpkin. And I'm going to leave a lot of footage in here because this is the first time I've ever used this product. And I'm sure there's others that are just like that. And it did have a lot of trial and error. So I tried to pull and stretch the modeling clay to get it like warmed up ready to go. And then I started like widening it out, trying to figure out how wide it needs to be for this pumpkin. From there, I started like forming it into a rough shape of a stem, trying to smooth it out. And there wasn't really directions on the packaging. Like, could you use water to help smooth it out? It didn't say, I mean, basically it was like, form the shape you want and let it dry for 24 hours. That's all I had to work with. So as I'm making this, I'm trying to like give it a natural look around the base of the stem. And then I would try to use my nails and push up like little mountains to create those ridges that you see in a pumpkin stem. And then I would run my finger between the, the ridges and try to smooth it out some more. It definitely was not as easy as I had expected it to be. I, I was expecting like a Play-Doh density and this was very light and airy. It, it was not what I was expecting. So here I'm twisting the stem and trying to lift up the center of the stem that I'm making to create more of a 3D effect. There, you can see it a little bit better right there that I'm trying to create that 3D look to it. And then I was really stressed out, so I had to take a bacon break. So then I took aluminum foil and I'm just trying to like create risers to put behind the stem while it was doing its 24 hour air dry to stay in place. So I just kept taking little balls of aluminum foil, tucking it behind there. And then I thought, okay, maybe I can use this aluminum foil in another way. I created a tiny little ball and tried to use it by tapping on the stem to create texture. I was finally pleased with how the stem looked, so I let it do its 24 hour cure, which it took a lot longer than that. And then I just found a variety of greens, browns, blacks, and whites in my paint stash to use to paint the stem of this. And I just there was no rhyme or reason. I just started mixing colors until I would get the look that I wanted for this. And I really, I wanted it to look somewhat realistic. My painting skills aren't up to that quality, but that was my goal is something that 
looked somewhat realistic. I got these leaves at Dollar Tree. I chose this pack because I liked the burlap leaves that it had in it. I liked the colors of them. I thought it gave it kind of a rustic looking feel to the pumpkin. So I just started playing around with where I wanted them to lay out. And I also grabbed some pipe cleaners in green for their vines and stems. Now I learned this really cool pipe cleaner trick from watching Dave Hack's channel here on YouTube. But you just take a lighter and you quickly run it along your pipe cleaner and it creates all these bumps and valleys and I thought it would be a really cool look to give it a vine feel for the pumpkin. So as you see I'm just very lightly running that um, lighter along it and then I cut them in half so now I have four pieces. So I take my little vine and I thread it through that top edge of the plate and twist it on to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna repeat that same process in a few other spots on the plate with my other vines. And these should stay just by twisting them on. You shouldn't need to glue them. Now I'm taking one of the burlap leaves and I'm using tweezers in the reverse direction. I'm sticking them in the hole of the burlap leaf and I'm stretching it open to help put it over the pipe cleaner vine we made. And then I take a paintbrush and make a little curly cue on the end to hold the leaf on. So again, I put the tweezers inside of one of the burlap holes and I let them separate to open that hole up and then I can thread it on to the vine we made much easier. And then once it's on there, you just take your paintbrush and wrap your vine around the paintbrush to make a curly cue. There's a better close up of what that hole will look like once you separate it on the leaf. So apparently I really liked playing with fire during this project because now I'm using the lighter to go around the outside edge of the burlap leaves to make sure that it doesn't fray anymore. So to create a hanger for this, I just used another green pipe cleaner and I threaded it through that top edge and I'm twisting it around itself to secure it and trim off the excess. Oh, you guys, we're almost done. We're gonna put the stem on now. And I just used hot glue to put that on, did a nice thick layer in the front, held it in place until it felt like it was gonna stay, and then really filled up that back gap with hot glue. And I was really pleased with how well that stem turned out for it being the first time using modeling clay. And then here I'm just tacking down the leaves in a couple of spots, trying to make them stick up or poke in the directions I want. Just added like a little hot glue above where the leaf is on that pipe cleaner just so it would stand up a little bit nicer. Adding a few more curly cues. And tip, it does work better to do the fire on the leaves before you put them on to the vines. But hindsight is 2020, right? So let's see what the final reveal looks like. If you enjoyed this video, could you please give it a thumbs up and help me reach my goal of 25 subscribers by the end of October? It would mean so much to know that people are out there rooting for me. If you're looking for more Halloween inspiration, I do have tutorials on my channel right now for this spider web vase centerpiece, as well as the four foot ghost table runner. I'll leave a link at the end of the video for that playlist. And if you have a sweet tooth like me, you're going to want to make sure you catch my upcoming videos all about tasty Halloween treats. Thanks for watching today, you guys. I hope you were inspired.